Okay, I'm back. I am back to show you how to cut out your pattern. We are going to be using this beautiful fabric. Hey, Heather. Okay. I forgot to also show you guys print out the neckband earlier. So don't forget that unless you're doubling up the bodice, which is pretty much easier. So, all right, I'm gonna get started. I just rolled this off the bolt. We have our fold up here and our selvage is down here. Now, what I like to do is I like to cut out the biggest pattern piece first because that lets me see how much fabric that I have left. I am a scrimper when it comes to my fabric. I will maneuver and move my pattern pieces around to get the most out of it. So I use the biggest one first, that way I know like usually um, there's enough left on the, what's left over to cut out your bodice or sleeve. So that way you're not wasting fabric. Okay, this looks like it might be good. Oh, so we can scoot it over some more. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I am going from one edge, folding it over, because we're gonna be cutting on the fold. This is the bottom back piece. I can scoot it just a little bit more. Good. Right. Okay. I could still scoot it some more, but I'm not. And I hope you guys can see this. I can't. Um, I can't turn the camera like this on Instagram, so I can't get very much of it in there. All right, so for these patterns, I don't normally pin down um, my patterns very often if they're made out of filtration paper because they don't move, but these paper patterns do move, so I pin them down. Okay. One piece down, one piece to go. A bunch of pieces. All right, so here's my extra. See here, I cut that out. So I'm gonna fold it and see what I can get out of it. Okay, so I can get both bodice pieces. Okay. Always cut on the fold. Make sure you look for the word fold. So you cut on the fold, which I'm sure you know. Okay, 
This one, I, I don't know if you can see. I didn't actually cut the neck band, this whole front out, because I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut under it so I can keep using this piece. Trash. Okay. Here's our bodices. Okay. Are you learning something over there? Yeah. Okay. This is our bottom front. I'm not sure what the official name is for that. Hey, Brandon. You're supposed to be working, boy. What are you doing watching my video? Here's our leftover uh, from that, and I think we can probably get a sleeve out of it, or maybe both sleeves. Not yet. Sorry. I have to get it just right. Brandon, you're such a brat. Okay, so I folded it double. Make sure I have all of the fabric straight underneath here. No, no bubbles or humps or anything like that. Sleeve. Check in the back to make sure. There's nothing like sitting down to sew and you got a huge notch out of the very back piece. Who's done that? Me. Okay. Have you done it? Yeah. I have a child watching. Moral support. You're my moral support. He's supposed to be cleaning his room. <laughs> okay, so here's our sleeve and cuff. Yeah, isn't that really disgusting when you do that? I get so aggravated. I'm like, why didn't I just check? Because if I would have like moved the piece down a half an inch, um, it wouldn't have done that. I'm real bad about it on the bottom of a bodice. Like the back piece will have like a notch because I didn't scoot it up far enough. our sleeves and cuff. Now, neck band. All right, look at this. Just look. If you do it like that, look at this. There's no big, huge, jagged edge of fabric left. Isn't that awesome? So, now we need a neck band. I know, I love sharp scissors. I finally bought me a new pair and a new little cutter and a new mat. I felt like I was uptown when I did that. 
Okay, so now our neck bend. Okay, now, I'm going to show you how to cut it with the pattern piece, and then I'm gonna show you how I actually cut it. I don't use a neck band pattern piece. You want the whole one? I got it. All right, so I hate to waste, cut a big off of this, but I'm gonna have to. Okay, so your neck bands have to be cut on a 45 degree angle, or the, it's also called the bias, because um, if it's not, your neck band's gonna like, it's not gonna curve in around your neck. It's gonna like wanna stand up. So um, you're going to have to cut it on a 45 degree angle. Now sometimes though, if you're doing it like this neckline, like you're folding it under, it doesn't really do that because, you know, it's cut down. Yes, I try to use every scrap that I can. But, I'm gonna have to waste it for this. So normally what I would do is if I'm cutting out a huge batch of, of shirts like this, I would save the neckband for last and then I would go through because sometimes I just use a contrasting fabric, like, like I'll cut out a whole bunch of black or whatever color. Like when I'm cutting and I have a bunch, like odd and pieces of fabric left, I'll just cut neck bands out of it instead of throwing it away. And then I can have, use those for something later, like something like this, like I wouldn't have to like cut into all this fabric. So here's your neck band. I'm gonna have to check, make sure this actually fits. But it's going on a 45 degree angle. If you don't know what a 45 degree angle is, if you have one of these mats, we have 60, 45, and 30. So we want to use the 45 degree angle. Um, it's on a mat. It's on your mat if you have a mat. If you don't have a mat, I highly recommend you get a mat. Okay, so this is what I this is what I normally do. I lay it down here. I like to cut my neck bands, leave the fold in case there's a little scrap that I can use for something else. So I cut on this this bottom corner. So right here is the end, and right here's the beginning, you can't see it, on the 45 degree angle, let's scoot it up here. So this is the way that your pattern is gonna go. So it's gonna follow, it's gonna go like this, and I'll have arrows on it, like, I don't have them on this, but I'll try to remember to put them on this piece in case you don't have a map. So this is the way it's going to follow. It's going to go like this, so you can scoot it all the way over. I do just like this is what I do. I take this, I line it up with this 45 degree angle on my mat. Then I find these. Okay. There's my cut. Now I'm gonna take this piece. Lay it down here. I'm not very good at cutting a free-handed straight line. Okay, so here's an egg band that's using um, this pattern piece. Or you can do just like I just did, use this mat and see how it's cut like that. So then I take it and I turn it like this. I got two layers here. I fold it on itself, so it's folded over, got two layers. then I can cut out a bunch of neck bands. So they're not the right length, of course, but they're cut and then I can cut them to length as needed. There's nothing as aggravating as having cut it too short, so I'd rather it be too long. 
So I cut them an inch and a half wide. So there is some neckband strips. I'm using this mat to. Where are you making? A shirt. Yeah. All right, so here's like, here's two, here's two, here's two. You cut these out, and then you could take your pattern piece and, you know, do this if you want. I actually sew the whole shirt together and then, or I sew the bodice together. Then I will cut this edge off straight. I will pin it to this shoulder seam up here, just overlapping it, you know, just a, a seam's width. Pin it down, then I start following the neck, pulling it a little bit as I go, going around just a little bit until I get all the way around to the other side. Then when it, I overlap it again just a little bit and then I cut it off. Then it fits this neck perfect. Okay, because sometimes um, the neck band piece, depending on what kind of fabric that you're using, it won't fit because some fabrics are really stretchy, like this is thin and really stretchy, but if I was to use like a heavier, uh, thicker fabric, the neck band wouldn't stretch as much and so it probably would be too small. So that's why I like to do it like this, like just have a long strip and then I can uh, customize it when I get ready for it. So I'll just cut me out a whole pile of these. But you will have a neck band piece in there um, to go by, sort of go by, and hope it fits depending on your fabric type. I always cut it a little bit longer rather than shorter just in case. Because sometimes if you're if you're sewing with scraps, you don't have any extra to spare. No, please get down. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut out some um, ruffles. Okay. I am matching up the selvage on the very bottom. You can't see what I'm doing, I'm on the back side, but I want the selvages to be lined up. I don't want it to be like, you know, one's straight and one's cockeyed. So they're even. They're not the same, they're not lined up, but they're still even. I'm gonna fold it in half. This fabric always, um, the selvage seems to shrink it on that side. So um, sometimes if it's really like drawed up on the selvage side, I'll just go ahead and just trim the selvage off. That way it's not pulling it smaller right there. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna trim it up. For this little girl's shirt, I'm probably gonna do three and a half inches. should probably be enough, but I'm gonna cut four just because it never hurts to have an extra. I'll have it on the pattern though. Okay, so I get lots of questions about the ruffles. So the ruffles, the pattern won't have a pattern piece for the ruffles, and this is why because you're just folding the fabric over and just cutting it into strips. So I would have to have you print out pattern pieces for a ruffle like this long. So that is, there's no point in that. So just cut it out into strips, the width of the fabric. So here's selvage. Okay, there we go. Selvage, 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 width of the fabric. 
This is how wide the fabric is. It's probably 58 inches. So I've just folded it in half once and then twice and then you can cut your strips. Okay. All right. So I will get off of here and move on to the next step. So I guess I will probably be back to video or do this live video on how to sew this together. So, all right. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comments. Bye.